afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. I'm Delphina de Nohusu, the Executive Director of UCAN. The EU Chamber of Commerce in Canada is an advocacy body in charge of disseminating CETA information and, of course, support EU-Canada trade relations. If you are new here, I invite you to visit UCAN's website to get information about CETA and how your company can benefit from it. You can also follow us on social media, mostly Twitter and LinkedIn, and I will drop all the links in the chat box uh, later today. Today is the episode number nine of the series of our webinar One Week, One Province with Saskatchewan. Next week, we will have the two final episodes of the, seri the series with British Columbia on December 9 and the three following provinces on December 10, Northwest Territories, Nunavut and Yukon. You can refer to our calendar on our website for registration, but again, I will also drop it in the chat box later. After the presentation, we will have a Q&A session, so please feel free to ask all your questions in the Q&A section at the bottom of your screen, so we can have time later to, to take all the questions. Now, I would like to introduce our guest speaker of the day. We have two today. We have first Kirk Westgard. He's the Assistant Deputy Minister of the Economic Development uh, at the Ministry of Trade and Exports Development. And then we have Chris Decker. He's the President and CEO of Saskatchewan Trade and Export Partnership. So I will see you later for the Q&A session and over to you, Kirk. Uh, thank you, Delphine, and thank you everyone for, for coming and listening to us talk about Saskatchewan and giving me the opportunity to tell you about why Saskatchewan and what we have to offer. Uh, it's a fantastic uh, province and I will get into it right away. Um, I'll start off by telling you a little bit about the, the ministry I work in. It's trade and export uh, development, like Delphine said, and what we are here to do is to help encourage and support economic development through foreign direct investment and reinvestment in the province of Saskatchewan and have a team of experts to help any company that is looking at making Saskatchewan home. We run a concierge service from everything to help you understand where to go, what to do and where your company should be able to make money in Saskatchewan, right from picking you up at the airport to leaving you back to go home and talk to your board of directors on why we should uh, work together. But let me start telling you about the province. And the question really is, why Saskatchewan and what we have to offer? And it's a simple reason, is that the world's population is about 7 billion people right now. And by 2050, experts say this will increase to more than 9.2 billion people. And this is important because Saskatchewan is a leader in three basic commodities, food, fuel, and fertilizer. And those three basic commodities are everything the world needs to continue to grow and, and experience economic success. We are a major exporter of cereal crops, pulse and canola. We're the sixth largest onshore oil producer in the US and Canada, and one of the world's top uranium producers. We are the world's largest producer of potash, the most effective fertilizer on the planet. This is why Saskatchewan's current success is not a temporary trend, but a long-term proposition. Saskatchewan has been making international headlines for a few years, thanks to its growing economy. However, in some parts of the world, people still don't know much about us, much less how to pronounce our province's name. But take a look at the map. We are, we're pretty hard to ignore with a landmass of 66,000 50, 651,000 square kilometers. We're almost as big as Texas and twice as big as Japan. But with all that space comes a limited population. We have only about 1.2 million people in all of that space. What we're saying is we have room to grow. We have room to invite your business and help you grow and strive. Forestry is our Northern Saskatchewan's largest economic se sector, generating nearly $1 billion in forest products and sales annually. Agriculture and related activities make up about 10% of Saskatchewan's GDP, providing about 35,000 jobs and account for more than 40% of our exports. Saskatchewan's agri-food exports are a significant contributor to the province's export economy and Saskatchewan's goal of increasing the value by 50% in the next 10 years. Growth in agri-food exports will be a result of increasing primary production and value-added production in the province.
Saskatchewan companies are experienced. With all that room, all those raw materials, we have to be experienced in exporting. We export a total of $29.3 billion in 2019. International trade is an important part of our economic activity. The province exports about 67% of what it produces to countries around the world. The United States is Saskatchewan's top exporter, receiving almost 54% of our total exports, while China is the second largest, followed by Japan, Brazil, and Mexico. My colleague Chris Decker will get more into what we have to offer with the Trade and Export Partnership. Asia is an important emerging export market for the province. Saskatchewan exports to Asia increased from 4.3 billion in 2009 to 7.5 billion in 2019. We do all this with a strong credit rating. We do it with stable regulatory environments and incentives that help and track and make Saskatchewan a competitive place to do business. The government is creating its fiscal stable economy and maintaining strong credit ratings. A AAA with Moody's Investor Services, the highest possible, and a AA with Standard & Poor's. It has the third lowest debt to GDP ratio in Canada. We offer competitive taxes and have committed to reducing the small business tax. We know that COVID-19 has created an economic slowdown around the world and in Saskatchewan. The government currently of the day has indicated that they are going to reduce the small business tax rate in Saskatchewan to 0% as of October of this year. This will increase to 2% what the current rate is in, by 2023. We believe that by producing a 0% small business tax rate, it will help small businesses continue to grow and prosper in the province. The government of Saskatchewan is committed to maintaining a competitive, stable, royalty and regulatory environment in the mineral sector. For that reason, International Research Organization, the Fraser Institute, rated Saskatchewan as the first in Canada for 2019 and in the top 10 internationally for mineral investment potential in the last six of the seven years. As we talked about earlier, we are one big landmass located right in the heart of the Canadian prairies, has some of the most fertile land in the world and nearly home to 40% of Canada's arable land. Saskatchewan supplies almost a third of the world's durum wheat we are also top exporters of lentils, dried peas, flax, oats, canola, mustard seed, and canary seed. We have a strong and growing agriculture food sector, and is a, we are a leader in the exporter of agri-food products with sales reaching 12.9 billion in 2019. The province is world renowned as a consistent supplier of high quality, safe agriculture products, including ingredients for a variety of foods such as cereals, beverages, baking products, snacks, and bars. We are positioning ourselves as a world leader in plant protein with several major companies opening pulse processing facilities in the past several years. Saskatchewan is home to the headquarters of the new plant protein supercluster, Protein Industries Canada. This supercluster is designed to bring together research and development resources and industry to help develop new products in this emerging sector. The province is also home to North America's largest oat processor and several companies producing new flaxseed processes or products. We have a very diverse mineral sector and is particularly rich in potash and uranium. The province accounts for about one third of annual global potash production and is home to nearly half of the world's known resources. The world's highest and highest grade uranium and largest deposits are located in the northern Saskatchewan. And if you can see their map, they're up in the Athabaskan Basin on the east side here. And there's some uh, very rich resources on the west side as well. We supply just over 13% of the world's primary uranium in 2019. Saskatch, we are one of the largest top mining jurisdictions with a total of $192 million spent on exploration last year. It is estimated that $229 million would be spent in 2020. We have over $4 billion have been spent on exploration since 2004, a significant increase from the decade before. It has been reported that Saskatchewan continues to lead all provinces with extended capital investments in the mineral 
ex extraction sector representing 14% of natural expenditures. In 2019, we produced 12.6 million tons of KCL with a sales volume of $6.3 billion. We currently have 10 operating potash mines in Saskatchewan with the latest mine that opened in uh, two years ago or three years ago in 2017 was the German based mining company K plus S. It was the first new mine that was opened in Saskatchewan in 45 years and has now been in production for more than two years and employs 400 people. With all this agriculture development and mining, we have to have a strong manufacturing sector and a growing and vibrant supply chain. We, manufacturing plays a key role in Saskatchewan's economy and in 2019 represented 5.6 of the province's GDP. Shipments reached $16.3 billion. Saskatchewan's Innovation Place Research Park in Saskatoon and Regina and Prince Albert are home to many leading research organizations. Innovation Place is one of North America's most successful university related technology parks. With facilities in Saskatoon, Regina and Prince Albert, Innovation Place is focused on assisting new technology companies, facilitating growth in existing technology and contributing to the technology sector community. With more than 350 employees, $73 million in annual revenue and over 68 years of R&D expenditure, SRC provides services and products to its 1,500 clients in Saskatchewan, Canada, and around the world. We are also home to the Canadian Light Service, North America's or Canada's only synchrotron and one of the most advanced in the world. Scientists from around the globe are using the synchrotron to conduct research in areas including nanotechnology, environmental technologies, and pharmaceuticals. With all the resources we currently have, we have to be exports in exporting our products. We're located in the center of North America and offer, and offer easy access to markets across the continent and around the world. The province is just one day drive from a market of 60 million people and a two day drive from 270 million people. Kirk, are you still with us? Chris, can you hear me? I can hear you, Delphine. Okay, so maybe Kirk has a little bit of a technical problem. Um, we'll just wait a few seconds, and if it's the case, maybe we I can show the the video in the meantime because we have a little bit a little video. Kirk, can you hear us? Okay. Okay, so <laughs> I think he has a connection problem, unfortunately. Um, maybe we will try to, I will try to share the video for now. Um, and then Chris, if uh, Kirk is not back, maybe you can take over with the, your presentation. Absolutely. Things happen. That's the world we live in. <laughs> okay, let me share the video now.
opportunity to do something really big in Saskatchewan. The whole plant-based ingredient uh, sector is booming right now. The demand is there and I'm very excited about the future. It offers a lot of different opportunities, whether you're looking for potash, or uranium, gold, nickel, diamonds, or copper, it's all here for us. Growing in the province has been extremely easy. If we've encountered any roadblocks, the Saskatchewan government is a quick phone call away. We're interested in stable fiscal regimes with strong resource potential and a strong and skilled workforce. And that's what we've got in Saskatchewan. And it's really just the Saskatchewan spirit, the innovation of people, the drive to improve and, and, and perform. And really they are the spark behind a lot of the larger ideas that push us forward. If you want to be international, you want to be an agri value, Saskatchewan is the place to be. opportunities here and they're endless. Okay, so, um, oh, Kirk seems to be back right on time. Great. Can you hear us, Kirk? Yes, I can. Sorry. About okay, that. great. No problem. We actually showcased the video while uh, you were coming back, so that's great. And we just finished it, so that's great. Would okay. you like me to to share the presentation, or you can you want? To... I can do it again. I don't okay. know where I left off or where I actually got kicked out. Um. So I think we were at the university slides. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. I'll just get back to where I was. I was just talking about the two universities yes, exactly. and the yeah. programs they had to offer. And what I was saying is that, you know, with everything we have, we need both the university, the academic side, as well as the people. So we run an immigrant nominee program in Saskatchewan, where we have a program that allows companies to work with the province to invite individuals that have the right skills at the right time for their business to grow and expand. So through the Saskatchewan Immigrant Nominee Program, we've seen an increase in immigration over the last 10 years. And we've seen about 130,000 people become immigrants to the province and they've located in about 430 uh, companies around the province. Uh, and with that being said, what we're here to do is help you and work with your businesses, allow you to come in and take advantage of our resources and grow and expand Saskatchewan with you. With that being said, I'll turn it over now again to Chris Decker, who will talk more about the, the trade investment or the export side of trade investment. Well, thank you, Kirk. I um, appreciate uh, the introduction and the opportunity to speak to everybody who has joined us today. Um, and thank you to Delphine and you can uh, and congratulations on your 25th anniversary and uh, a special shout out and uh, expression of our appreciation to all of those participants that have joined us from around the world kirk has done a great job in summarizing saskatchewan and the incredible trade and investment opportunities with and in our province so i'm going to answer two questions for you today simply what is step the agency that i represent and also, I'm going to re-emphasize and expand on some of Kirk's initial thoughts and presentation on why should you be interested in trade with Saskatchewan and what we have to offer. First, as it relates to STEP, Saskatchewan's Trade and Export Partnership, we are an independent, 
not-for-profit, membership-based agency contracted by the provincial government to assist Saskatchewan exporters to access international markets. So it's important to note that we're an independent agency run by the export industry for the export industry. It's a rather unique model in North America. And what that does, and you'll know this if you're in business, we can run and do our programs at the speed of business. And our programs are extensive. We do export counseling, we have market intelligence, exporter education and pathfinding, market entry training, international trip support, and outgoing and incoming international and national missions. When we're not restricted by COVID-19, we do typically 40 to 45 national and international missions every year. For those into Europe, and some of you will recognize these, we, we usually associate with major trade shows like SEMA, Euroteal, TIER, Health Ingredients, Biofac, Food Ingredients, Agritechnica, and the list goes on. In fact, over the last year, Chris, um, I think there's a sound problem. Um, Kirk, can you, uh, maybe it's me who doesn't hear the sound? Are no, you here? The, okay. I'm, I'm yeah. still here, but there's no sound coming from Chris right now. Okay. Um, sorry, technical problem happens. <laughs> yes, great. You are back. Okay. Great. Another technical problem. Sorry about that. Um, where did we leave off? Did you uh, hear us? talk about the international missions? Yes, yes, yes. You were mentioning the, some, some of the, the fairs you usually go. Okay, thank you. And, and again, our apologies for technical problems. But yes, we've uh, done um, up to 11 missions over the last year and a half into Europe associated with the trade shows that you see before us. With COVID-19 restrictions, of course, we had to pivot very quickly into virtual trade opportunities. And so far, we've done three virtual trade missions into the European market and will certainly continue as long as that requirement is before us. But at STEP, we believe we have the best mandate in the country uh, because we get to talk about and, and promote the Saskatchewan story. And it's an incredible success story, but it wasn't always the case. Uh, some 15 years ago, uh, the international marketplace, as Kirk pointed out earlier, couldn't point to Saskatchewan on a map let alone be able to pronounce it. So what has changed? What's different? Why do major international media now say, if you care at all about the future of the world's food supply, you care, whether you know it or not, about Saskatchewan? Well, again, Kirk alluded to this answer, and we all know this. Uh, all the participants are well aware of this statistics and that statistic, and that is there is 7 billion of us on this planet, and it's growing and it's growing exponentially. Everybody has their favorite China statistic. Mine is this. China is growing the equivalent population of the entire country of Canada, some 30 million people, into its middle class each and every year. And with that expansion, with that growth, comes affluence. And they're going to need things. As Kirk pointed out, Saskatchewan is blessed with an abundance of resources. We have tapped and untapped reserves of oil and gas. We have a wealth of mineral resources, including the world's richest deposits of potash and uranium, gold, mine, diamonds, and much sought after helium. We have a robust and growing manufacturing and research and development sectors. And as been noted, and uh, mostly important to uh, some of the folks that are gathered today, uh, and noted by the New York Times, Saskatchewan is the food basket to the world. But in addition to that, and to emphasize this, we have what the world needs. We have what Europe needs. And for those businesses on the line today, and more importantly, we have what your customers need. They may want things like a 50-inch plasma screen TV, but they need what Saskatchewan has to offer. And in addition to that, the food, fuel, and fertilizer, we have the Canadian brand. Customers want what Canada and Saskatchewan stands for, and that Canadian brand stands for unmatched quality, 
safety and security, competitive pricing, and as Kirk noted earlier, efficient delivery from the center of the North American continent to the world. I just want to stop and talk a little bit about what that means to the European Union and its member states. We have a, a long-standing relationship between Saskatchewan, Canada, and European countries when it comes to trade. You'll note that from this slide, most of our exports go into the United States. In 2019, we shipped about $30 billion worth of products and services around the world, just over half of that to the United States. And that's because, of course, of the immense size of that market, but also because of its geographic proximity to Saskatchewan and Canada. Uh, after that, it's China with its growing population and growing needs, and the EU, you will note is our third most important export market for Saskatchewan at 1.2 billion. As we identify each market within the EU, we'll note that it's Italy at 303 million, Belgium at nearly 300, France, Germany, Netherlands, United Kingdom, Portugal, Spain, Lithuania, and Greece round out our top 10 export markets within the EU. So what is it that we're shipping? As you'll see by this slide, this is year to date from January to September of any particular year. You'll see it's a lot largely in the commodities, canola seed, durum wheat, potash, wheat, lentils, flax seeds, soybean, mustard seeds. But you also notice that manufacturing is also an important component of what we ship into the European Union. Uh, rock pickers, stone removers, harvesting, mowing machinery, and cedars. But what's important to note is the incredible growth year to date from January, September of 2019 to January, September of 2020. You will see that for instance, canola up 223%, durum wheat up 100%, wheat 31%, um, flaxseed up 380%. These are incredible increases to the exports coming from Saskatchewan into the European Union. It speaks to two principal things. First of all, the opportunities that CETA has presented as we lower tariffs between our two jurisdictions, but also the importance of what Saskatchewan has to offer and what Europe needs, particularly during pandemic. The need to feed the world does not stop for pandemic. So what Saskatchewan has to offer the European Union and your customers is incredibly important. So there's incredible opportunities, as was noted again by Kirk in some of the slides that he presented, currently between Saskatchewan and the EU. And I'll just cover a quick number of these, first through food ingredients. There's plant proteins and flowers and starch, edible oils and pasta and fruits. There's jams and pie fillings, flavoring syrups and wine in specialty and gourmet foods, honey mustard, snack food and ethnic food. There are a number of animal feed opportunities in commercial and premixes and colostrum, niche food opportunities, gluten-free, organic, and non-GMO. And of course, there's also processed forages and pet foods and ingredients. But we shouldn't, shouldn't dismiss the incredible manufacturing opportunities from Saskatchewan to the world and specifically to EU. We are world leaders in broad acre dryland farm machinery, we have a, a substantive forest product industry providing lumber and oriented strand board, OSB. And we also have high tech agriculture manufacturing opportunities, including this opportunity, which is the DOT technology from Seedmaster, now Craven, which is a GPS autonomous uh, platform by which farmers literally can put their platform uh, product on and press play to do what they need into the fields of Saskatchewan. It's an incredible opportunity. Very quickly, I wanna talk about also the future opportunities that Saskatchewan can offer to the European Union. The first element is indeed rare earth elements. Uh, some of you will know that rare earth elements are scandium and neodymium and dysborosium, which have found their way in every aspect of our daily lives, like smartphones and fluorescent lamps and hybrid cars, rechargeable batteries, wind turbines, and, and display, uh, display screens. Today, these elements play a critical role in a number of booming and profitable techni technology industries, and the European Union and the United States have both declared and labeled rare earth elements as critical materials. 
And to date, not many countries have been able to mine them. China has dominated that market and supplies about 85% of the world's rare earth materials. But Saskatchewan does have a significant rare earth supply and the Saskatchewan government just announced a $31 million investment to build a new rare earth processing facility in Saskatoon and we'll be able to export that product to the world in a, in a number of months. Secondly, I wanna to talk to you about irrigation and value added food crops as the future in Saskatchewan. The government of Saskatchewan is, is aiming at a $4 billion investment over 10 years to expand the province's irrigation network around Lake Diefenbaker uh, in central Saskatchewan. In this, we're talking about carrots and beets and lettuce and cabbage and cucumbers and potatoes, all of which could be soon produced in large scale uh, within Saskatchewan over the next decade. These are high value crops and speak to the value added uh, strategy in terms of processing that we will be uh, engaging in over the next number of years. And as Kirk alluded to as well, the future is about plant protein and Saskatchewan not only has the feedstock for plant proteins, but also the investment into the processing for plant proteins. This is a big market. The global plant protein market is at about 8 billion currently and it's expected to reach 14.8 billion US by 2023 at an annual growth rate of 6%. And so over the next five years, uh, the consumption of plant-based protein is projected to nearly double. And Saskatchewan is your source. We like to say, if you don't believe us, listen to Hollywood. I mean, if there's no more credible industry in the world, it's Hollywood. And by that, I mean, of course, the famed director and producer, James Cameron, who was responsible for great movies like Titanic and Avatar, who recently invested substantially in Saskatchewan's plant protein industry and processing just outside Saskatoon. And in announcing that, he noted that Saskatchewan is the future. Thank you very much for that opportunity. I know that we've uh, had a slight delay, so I'll cut it pretty quick and uh, look forward to the discussion and any questions that you might have. Delphine, over to you. Thank you very much. No, actually, we, we, we have a lot of time, so that's good because we have a lot of time for, for question and answer. To the participants, sorry for the, for the small technical problem, but uh, I guess uh, it, it can happen. Uh, thank you, Kirk and, and, and Chris, for your, for your very insightful presentation. I have some few questions in the Q&A section, so please feel free again to um, ask other questions. And I also personally have uh, some, some few questions. So I will start with, uh, with one, maybe Kirk, you, you, you touch base on, on this point. Um, when you, because I know it's, it's usually a topic that is, is being asked by Europeans. So can you, could you give us a little bit more details on the immigration program, for example, if uh, Saskatchewan is looking for uh, any particular skilled workers from, from Europe or, yeah, if you can touch base a little bit more on the immigration side, because indeed it's something that uh, EU companies are looking at, obviously, yeah. Yeah, of course. I can do my best. I, mm -hmm. I don't work in the immigration field. We have a ministry, yeah, yeah, of uh, ministry of Immigration Career Training. But what I can tell you is the immigration program uh, is quite similar to other immigration programs across Canada, where the provinces get to set out their skilled worker list of individuals and, and experiences that they're looking for. So they do have a list of, of experiences that are listed there through uh, what we call direct entry that doesn't need a job, but as well as they continually work with companies that are looking for individuals with the education and work experience that meet their needs in their own employment in, in uh, the province, which then provides a fast track approach to immigration into Canada um, through the federal process. So it's a two stage process, but it ensures that both the applicant and the individual know where they're going. And it uh, has worked relatively well for Saskatchewan. We've been able to uh, show great success in this process and it continues to move forward. So a range of skills that of course, focuses around what we have in Saskatchewan from manufacturing to research and development and, and everything in between from synchrotron to a welder. It's all needed in Saskatchewan and there's great opportunity at this point in time. Okay, great, thanks. 
Um, and anyway, to the participants, yeah, again, you will receive you will receive both presentations, so you will get Kirk and Chris contact. So you can then, if you have any project or any question you would like to go deeper in, you can uh, feel free to contact them directly. We have a question in the in the chat box. Um, how big is the production of organic plants in Saskatchewan? So I don't know who would like to go on this one. Certainly, I, I can speak to that uh, in, a, uh, in a general sense. Uh, the organic industry and, and organic acreage in Saskatchewan is substantive and it's growing. 60% uh, of the uh, acreage in Saskatchewan uh, in, in total acreage is dedicated to organics. And so that's it's substantive. And not only are we growing more crops, but we're also processing and exporting it from Saskatchewan. So it is substantive. Um, I don't have the details over the uh, types of crops and, and um, the opportunities for export, but I could certainly provide that uh, in terms of more specifics uh, to you, Delphine, and you could share that with the group at, at a later time. Okay, great. Um, we have another question. Uh, another question. Um, is the province interested in developing aerospace projects or it will continue on the existing path? Uh, we do have an aerospace and defense technology sector that is, is not as big as other provinces in Canada, but yes, we're very interested to be part of that bigger supply chain and have technical components and manufacturers in Saskatchewan that are quite involved in it. Um, if the individual who has a question would like more information, I think my contact information is out there and we could connect at a later time to discuss what opportunities are in Saskatchewan for them. Okay. Um, also, I'm interested in knowing if 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 you have them uh, in mind. What do you have in mind? Some let's say project by um, that have been developed by EU companies in in your province, whether it's uh, trade or investment. Let's say, do you do you have something in mind so we could maybe you know have a kind of a success story or case study? Even though we will not go into too much detail, but um, yeah. Chris, if I could start off, I think one of the biggest success stories would be the K plus S potash mine just outside of Regina here. It's about 75 kilometers uh, north of Regina, um, is a solution mine by the German uh, mining company. And it's a, um, been a massive success that's been in operation for two years and employs over 400 people. Um, and I would certainly add that in terms of, of developments in, in exports, one of the key success stories out of Saskatchewan is AGT Foods. AGT Foods is, is one of the largest exporters of lentils and peas and pulses uh, in the world, quite frankly. And its entrepreneur uh, and major principal, Nirad al Khatib, has just been named the um, Entrepreneur of the Year by Ernst & Young. And it's an incredible success story. And it speaks about a number of things. First of all, it's, it speaks about the incredible innovation and ability to pivot of our producers here in Saskatchewan. 20 years ago, there was very little lentils and, and pulses grown in Saskatchewan. And AGT was able to see the opportunity as the world, as I had mentioned, grows in terms of its size, but also its propensity to, to buy qual high quality food and high quality proteins. And they were able to um, contract with farmers to grow significant amounts of pulses and lentils and chickpeas and, and ship them around the world. Uh, it speaks to the ability, as I had mentioned, for par farmers in Saskatchewan to grow just about anything that the, that the world needs and our ability to export it to the world through companies like AGT, high quality, um, sufficient quantities and efficient delivery. That's the Canadian brand. Great, thanks for, for this. This is great. And if you have more success stories, feel free to share with us. We are always interested in, you know, in knowing uh, what happens between, uh, between EU and, and, and Canada, in generally speaking. I have another um, question maybe for you, Chris. Um, you mentioned the export to, to Europe. Do you know what Saskatchewan import from Europe, mostly? or? 
Yes, so we're an export agency, so we largely focus on selling abroad. Um, of course, trade is, is two ways. And so there is significant imports uh, from around the world and notably from Europe. I don't have that complete list, but it will largely be uh, the, from on a retail perspective, um, you know, whether it, it's, it's um, clothing and, and, and electronic goods, that will be the principal areas that we would import from Europe. We're a relatively small market. So a lot of what comes in from Europe will first land in our larger centers, Vancouver, Toronto, Montreal, and then get exported to Saskatchewan. So we don't have really tight numbers or specific numbers about what comes into Saskatchewan directly from Europe, but it'll be in, largely in the retail fields. Great. Um, I, for now, we don't have other questions, but I always have comments. So <laughs> please, uh, to all the participants, feel free to, to uh, put your question in the Q&A section. Um, we, it, it's actually quite interesting, uh, Chris, to see the, the figures that you mentioned, the difference between January, uh, September 2019 and 2020, because later I'm in a webinar talking about the impact of COVID-19. And in your case, it has been mostly, I mean, in some uh, areas, it has been uh, quite good. Could you also, um, uh, I mean, talk a little bit more about what CETA has changed? I mean, for you, for, your, for the companies that are in Saskatchewan, for the Canadian companies that uh, want to trade or even invest uh, with Europe? Uh, yes, of course, Delphine. Um, CETA is, a, is a, uh, an incredible free trade opportunity for Saskatchewan exporters. Um, and we certainly congratulate the federal government for, for building that bridge. And now it's up to our exporters and importers, as we call them from Europe, to cross that bridge. And you're starting to see that, that occur. The biggest uh, benefit to either side of uh, the, the ocean is the reduction in tariffs. When we level the playing field in any relationship, in any trade relationship, trade starts to flow. Um, but also important, equally important for at least Saskatchewan exporters, is the notion of, of science-based decision-making and the ability to, uh, to adjudicate uh, non-tariff barriers, whether it's sanitary or phytosanitary uh, application of regulatory regimes on either side. Uh, there's, a, there's a great opportunity to ensure that we have a level playing field as it relates to safety considerations and other regulatory requirements that really fosters trade between two jurisdictions. So it's a combination of the reduction of tariffs, science-based decision-making, and an opportunity for Europe to take in full advantage of what I've called the Canadian brand and what we offer to uh, European producers. Um, Europe can uh, make a lot of money off of what Saskatchewan can offer into the European Union. And that's what business is all about. Great. Kirk, do you want to add something on this? No, I, I think Chris is, has done a fantastic job and really at the end of the day, it is all about making money and we're open to this and we have a government that supports business growth and new uh, entrants into the market and we're here to help. You know, if we could clear the way for any business who wants to come and, and start doing more business in Saskatchewan, we'd be happy to engage with them and see what we can do to clear the way. And, and I, I have another question actually related to, to COVID. D did the province uh, put anything in particular, for example, let's say if a European company is interested in, in your province, but obviously with COVID, I mean, travel restrictions are a little bit uh, uh, complicated. So do you provide any kind of, um, let's say, COVID-19 uh, services that will still allow EU companies to, you know, to carry on on their, on their, proje on their projects within the, the province? Um, you know, I think I'd ask for more clarification if we're talking about are we doing anything to reduce the number of days that an individual has to be in quarantine? Or are we looking at trying to decrease the quarantine for individuals who are traveling into the province? Um, you know, we're looking at all options to be able to move projects forward. We can do a lot over technology, but uh, you know, it's not the same as in-person meetings or actually seeing the ground of where a business could be and the opportunities, opportunities that exist there. Um, but we continue to look at all options right now and continue to reach out to companies uh, to try and get them aware of Saskatchewan and what we have to offer and, and build a, a, a bigger business network.
doing that. Great. Delphine, Please. I could just yeah. add to that, yeah. uh, to what Kirk has said. It, there is a, um, uh, obviously the COVID travel restrictions and the thickening of the borders and, and the restrictions on gathering has really limited international engagement not only from Saskatchewan engaging in um, our markets overseas, but also in incoming buyers restrictions coming in into Canada. Uh, and as much as virtual trade opportunities and virtual trade missions are, are, are a great help, um, they're just not the same as being in person. Our members are, are noting that, it, as I had noted, um, it's, it's a great assistance. It's, it, it does help to identify qualified trade leads, and it does a lot in terms of customer relationship but it lacks that personal connection and that the outcomes, those, those consummation of trade deals are just not the same if they were in person. So we're really chomping at the bit as everybody is to be re-engaged on the international marketplace. Uh, and when we do, uh, trade, uh, Saskatchewan Trade and Export Partnership has enhanced what we have to help subsidize buyers coming into Saskatchewan to do business with our export members. We call it the Incoming Buyers Program. And for qualified buyers who are going to meet with exporters, we will help subsidize that travel. And we bump that up a bit, noting that we want to get re-engaged and we want to tell the world that we're ready to do business. So when we're, when we're able to travel, we'll be there to help subsidize that. I'd also note just very quickly that uh, a couple of our airports in Canada, Calgary and Toronto specifically, have a program in place whereby international travels will be able to uh, test immediately upon arriving and isolate for two days or three days pending the test results instead of the 14 days that is typical around the world. And I know that the provincial government is working very hard to get a similar uh, program like that at our international airports. So there's a, is, there are opportunities uh, to isolate in, uh, over a less period of time, which is really helpful to international engagement. Yeah, exactly. We we hope this uh, project will indeed uh, go on the scale of the whole of Canada, so EU um, companies can you know start coming in and uh, and do more business with uh, with Canada. And ob obviously, we are all waiting for, for for the vaccine. But I guess we had a good news this morning with UK um, going one step uh, one step forward. All right. So I think we've uh, we've answered all the the question. Unless there's uh, one, feel free to drop it now in the, in the chat box or in the the Q and A. But again, um, thank you very much, uh, Kirk and Chris, for this uh, morning presentation. I will share your presentation with the audience uh, by email later today. So to all the participants, you will receive the contacts. So again, feel free to contact them directly for your project, whether it's trade or investment. Uh, they will be happy to to help you. I'm sure. Um, and I wanted again to remind you of the last two episodes of the series of our webinars One Week, One Province next week. So Wednesday we will have British Columbia and Thursday we will have the three following provinces, Northwest Territories, Nunavut and Yukon. You can register directly through our website yukon.com. And yes, you can follow us on our social media and sign up to our newsletter so you will have all the information about EU and Canada trade. Again, thank you very much, Kirk and Chris, for, for your presentation today and looking forward to do more business between EU and Saskatchewan. Thank you. Enjoy thank the you. day. Thank you very much. Have a Take great care. day, everyone. Bye.